So what exactly will SpaceX do when they get to Mars? Keep watching this video to find out what Elon Musk just revealed about this. Welcome to Elon Musk Rewind. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and hit the notification bell icon to get updated with Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, and everything about Elon Musk. Elon Musk, the billionaire tech mogul, revealed perhaps his most heist-like, not to say Bond villain-esque, plan in a late-night tweet last summer. What was this plan? Nuke Mars. Was it a joke? Though it may sell a few t-shirts, Keep in mind that Musk had already mentioned his plan to launch a thermonuclear device on Mars some four years earlier. Furthermore, it's definitely worth exploring SpaceX and its ambitions to colonize Mars, regardless of whether you take him at his word. For our video today, we're going to talk about what SpaceX plans to do when they get to Mars. Firstly, I think we should consider how serious Elon Musk really is about getting there. And the response to this question is that he does take it very seriously. Though the billionaire has probably become most famous for his electric car company Tesla, his rocket company SpaceX was founded in 2002 with a clear goal of bringing down the cost of travel to Mars. He has made no secret that he wants to get to Mars as soon as possible, as he said publicly, we need to get to Mars as soon as possible because we don't know when something is going to happen to the Earth. In addition, it suggests human civilization would benefit from colonizing Mars before World War III. Consequently, SpaceX has put billions of dollars into finding a way not only to fly to Mars, but also how to do so in a sustainable and cost-effective way. At the moment, SpaceX's plan is truly remarkable. Firstly, a heavy sci-fi craft called Starship is being developed that's expected to be the main backbone of early Mars missions. In addition, it can transport more than 100 tons of payload to and from the Red Planet. This spaceship will be launched into orbit by the Super Heavy, which is another futuristic booster stage rocket. It's designed solely for escaping the gravity of Earth and is powered by no less than 28 mighty Raptor engines designed by SpaceX. In total, 20 rockets will lift the Starship into orbit and 8 will land the booster stage safely on Earth using SpaceX's patented vertical landing system. Meanwhile, as a feature of SpaceX's Mars strategy, space hardware can be reused. Musk himself has complained that it's strange Lockheed and Boeing don't sell single-use aircraft but single-use rockets, even though they're his primary competitors in the space sector. Starship will refuel once it reaches orbit. An orbital tanker most likely comes from another Starship unit allotted specifically for that purpose. Afterward, the tanker will begin its 100-day voyage to Mars. By the time the craft reaches Mars, its momentum will have been slowed by the Martian atmosphere. As a result, the heat shield of the Starship will likely be damaged or abated. However, the SpaceX team has designed for this. We have to determine exactly where they will land on Mars. In case you thought the Martian surface was all the same without the twinkling oceans and striking coastlines of Earth, you'd better think again. This is where we find the highest mountain in our solar system, Olympus Mons. As mission planners begin to sketch out their plans, they're considering the geography of the area. With the atmosphere denser at lower altitudes, decelerating starships will have an easier time, but the local weather availability must always remain a priority. Most people are aware that liquid water once flowed across Mars, but that's now mostly barren. As a result, some of that water will be locked up in ice, providing an essential requirement for any future colony. Apart from the relief of being able to avoid cutting millions of gallons of heavy water across the solar system, the parched throats of future colonists will also be a helpful benefit. According to Smart Money, a landing zone should be located at a latitude lower than 40 degrees, which is in close proximity to subsurface water ice deposits. Further, for the solar arrays necessary to provide power to the colony, it's vital to have as much sunlight as possible. A very likely unmanned landing, planned for the year 2024, will need to deal with the problem of refueling with only natural resources from the planet, which is a top priority for SpaceX. A blend of liquid methane and liquid oxygen was chosen by SpaceX engineers for the Starship's fuel mix. Due to the fact that this ingenious blend burns relatively cleanly, rocket boosters can be reused time and time again. However, the Sabatier process is such a clever bit of chemistry that it can be produced from scratch even on Mars using less energy. 
A nickel catalyst is used in the Sabatier process developed in France by Paul Sabatier and Jean-Baptiste Senderens in 1897 to manufacture methane using atmospheric carbon dioxide and hydrogen, which is readily available from local Mars water ice. As a result of doing the math, SpaceX engineers determined that the amount of energy needed to make this reaction work and generate fuel for use in almost 26 months would require an array of 56,600 square meter sized solar panels located on the ground. Fortunately, engineers have determined that it could be transported to Mars by a single Starship payload. Elon Musk, best known for his electric car, is also fond of high pollution rocket fuel and there's a good reason for this as always. As he stated, an electric rocket is really difficult to be made. He further added, I wish there was, but in the long term, we could use solar energy, combine it with water and produce fuel and oxygen right here on Earth. As a consequence, he'll save the world in due time, while another important task for those pioneers may seem dull in some ways. Specifically, they would need to operate tedious machines such as the Boring Company. Among the few high-profile endeavors of Elon Musk here on Earth are his Boring Company, which is currently digging tunnels for a future subterranean transportation network throughout Los Angeles. Mining equipment that is optimized for weight will be necessary to access Mars' subsurface water. More importantly, early settlements on Mars would need to be located in deep subsurface artificial caves to protect future human colonizers from relentless ionizing radiation bombardment. My apologies if that spoils your vision of gazing out over the rusty surface of Mars through floor-to-ceiling windows. The propellant plant and base will be better designed once Musk will have another invention to be developed. Starlink's network of satellites currently illuminating the night sky in perfect geometric patterns around the planet Earth is likely to reach the Martian atmosphere as well. In addition, it'll provide vital communication links between colonists on Mars and humans back on Earth. A few leaps of imagination are needed to imagine self-driving Tesla vehicles operating on the surface of Mars, such as ferrying ice to the propellant plants. The new Tesla batteries have been photographed, stacked up at one of SpaceX's Starship production and testing facilities in Boca Chica, Texas, though this has not been confirmed by the company. SpaceX chose the location in part of its proximity to the equator, rather than nuking their Martian neighbors aside. Elon Musk has regularly predicted what a future Mars colony would look like. As he has interjected this into the debate, he has covered a wide range of topics as well as made a few cringeworthy dad jokes about future bars on Mars and the like. Elon Musk has also put forth some thoughts on the potential political makeup of this brave new world. He outlined his preferred system of governance in an October 2018 tweet that called for direct democracy by the people. It's necessary for laws to be short in order to prevent death by a bureaucracy that continues to expire after long periods of time. By the presence of 40 people, any rule can be overturned and freedom regained. Several parties will need to step in once an infrastructure for transportation to and from Earth has been established in order for the colony to function successfully. SpaceX has repeatedly mentioned that getting to and returning from the area without incident are the most difficult problems. To make the Martian project a success, other players from government, academia, and industry are needed. In other words, whether Elon Musk actually plans to nuke the nearest neighbor or to do whatever else will melt the ice on Mars, his work is certain to create an explosive effect. That's all for this video about Elon Musk's SpaceX, and thank you for watching. If you would like to receive updates about him, make sure you click the subscribe and bell icon.